Hi there, uh, everybody. Um, this is Loretta, and today uh, we are going to show you how to work a painting. Um, it's actually this painting. If you can see it, it's a cute little barn scene. Pretty simple once you know what to do. And I'll leave that right there so we can look at it while we paint. Um, in your kit that you get from the library, you should have these colors of paint. We've got red, yellow, white, brown, kind of a pretty blue, and green. And I just put those on a plate. Um, make sure your plate is white so you can see the colors good and clear. Um, you can also put plastic wrap over the paint if your mom doesn't want you to get her plate messy. Uh, this will wash off though fairly easy if you do it right away. Otherwise you'll have to scrub a little bit but it will come off. So we've got the paint which you should have in your kit. Um, I use the cheap little paints from Walmart and uh, I think those are like 50 cents or 99 cents each. So um, you can do that. Also, you should have brushes similar to these, a small one and a big one. You'll be using those. You'll need a paper towel, and you'll need a bowl of water, which I have back here, and I use that as my prop. You can have, you can use anything to prop your canvas up with. Um, you can use books, which I typically use, but today I'm going to use my water. And then you will have a uh, a pencil you will need a pencil and you'll also need these patterns that I gave you um, you can draw it freehand certainly if you think you can do that that's great if not I use a lot of templates that helps me to make sure to get the right dimensions that I want for my uh, picture if I'm doing something like freehand flowers or something I might not use a pattern but something with these straight edges that we have here um, you're going to want to use a pattern just to help you out a little bit. But um, you'll see on the pattern is a ruler. And we're going to be using that just to get the right uh, things in the right place, I guess I should say. So you'll be cutting out all of these pieces. Um, you can pause this, this uh, video anytime and catch up. So to save time, I'm just gonna rush through it, but you can pause it at any time. Um, I have cut out my patterns already. And here's my ruler. I'll need that. And then we have the bush. You're gonna draw two of these, or you'll have two of these on your pattern. There's the tree, the barn, and the barn door, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is get our pictures or what we're going to paint on the canvas. We're going to use a pencil. Um, don't sharpen that pencil too sharp. Or if you do, be very careful because this will poke a hole. This is just fabric that has been treated with paint. Um, so it will poke a hole through it. So you want to have a light touch when you're doing this part. Okay, so for our barn, we're going to go up on the bottom about two inches. So if you can see, I'm doing this. I'll turn this a little bit more this way. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go up about two inches and just draw a little line with my pencil. And then do the other side about two inches. And then down here about two inches. And then I'm just going to connect the lines. You don't have to be super accurate on that. So there is where our ground is going to start. Um, and the barn will start right about here. Okay. So now take your barn piece. And that's going to line right up to the edge of your canvas. Right up to the edge there. And put it on the line. Like I said, it doesn't have to be super accurate. And then you're going to trace over this with a light touch. You want to be able to see the pencil marks, but you don't want them to be real heavy or you will go through the canvas. Okay, so there's our barn already on the canvas. Then you're going to take the barn door, put that about in the middle, and then 
trace around that. Oop. Okay, so now you have your barn door. Um, okay, next step is the tree. And the tree goes next to the barn. And then you'll just draw that on there. And you don't have to be super careful just to get an outline of what you're going to be painting. Okay, so we got our tree on there. And then we've got this little flowering bush here. So we're going to put this here and we don't have to be super careful. And then another one right beside it. And if you, like in this case, I've gone over a little bit, that's okay. Because we can go right to the edge with this. Okay, and I will tell you that no two paintings you do will ever look alike. So this one's going to look a little bit different than this one, and that's okay. That's that's what we're doing. Okay, so now we have everything drawn on here. We're going to start, I always like to start with a background. So we're going to do the sky first. And before we do that, I do want to show you um, that you need to have a fluid wrist with painting. So you have to be able to go like this or like this or make a C shape where you twist your fingers kind of like you're using chopsticks kind of twist with your fingers. Um, so we're going to try that a little bit. If you can't do it, that's fine. We will adjust. So I'm picking up some blue and we're just going to start painting and see how I'm going back and forth, back and forth. And what I'm trying to do by doing this, sometimes it shows up on the painting and that's okay. But I'm trying to make sure that all of these little tiny squares that you will see on your canvas, especially with these thin paints, sometimes you might, like right here, make a little brush. I don't know if you can see that and see white showing through. We don't want that. We don't want white to show through. So if you go back and forth, you're filling in all of those little squares. And you just keep loading your brush. Use the very edge. I don't know if you can see this, but use the very edge and go like that to do your sharp edges. Don't try to do it like this because that's going to not work for you. Now, we're also going to do the sides. Just where the sky stops on the side. You can see that. Just go ahead and paint that side. So it just makes the painting look better when it's hanging on the wall. Okay. So we've got that. I'm going to do the top edge all the way to here because the sky will go all the way over to there. And then the sky will also come to the edge of this bush. So I'll just go ahead and paint this now, just so I remember to do it. Okay. And then I'm just going to keep painting the sky. And when you get to the edges, don't have to be super careful because that green is going to cover up when we do the tree itself. So we're just going to keep brushing this on and this takes a, a little bit of practice to get the hand motion down. It's kind of like when you first learned to write. It was really hard to hold the pencil and this is the same kind of thing but after you've done it for a while then you get the idea and it comes easier. So practice, practice, practice if you want to be a painter. Okay. Now see I've kind of gone over a little bit. I got a little bit of a mess there, but that's okay because the green is going to cover that up. You just have to make sure that your painting is dry. When you get to a narrow spot like this, then you want to turn it on its side, but you want a very light touch because if you push too hard, you're going to end up with a big blob like that. You don't want that. You want a, just a little sharp edge just like that. So be just be uh, careful, but you don't have to be terribly, terribly careful. It's You can cover up a lot of mistakes with paint. Okay, so, but you have to make sure the paint is dry 
before you try to cover up a mistake. Okay, so, uh-oh, I have a little gooby thing on there. We don't want that. Okay, so there we go. And then we're going to get kind of close to this edge. And if you go over a little bit, you're going to cover it up. I guarantee it. So you just don't want to go over on an area that is going to be white if you can help it. Um, you can cover up white, but it takes a little more effort and you have to put several coats on there. And so it's easier if you just don't. But if you do, it's okay. Okay, so we are going to get closer to these edges, but it doesn't have to be exact because they kind of all run a little bit together there. Try not to leave big globs of paint, like there's a little line here. Try to make it smooth. Go back, smooth it all out. And if you leave a big glob of paint, it's really no big deal, except it does take longer to dry. And since we're trying to do this all in one session, you don't have a lot of time for drying paint. Okay, there's our background. Not too bad. I think it looks good. Um, also, what we're going to do now is make a little cloud right here. And if you want to make two clouds or three clouds, that's fine. But we're going to put a sun in this corner, which I actually forgot to draw on there, which you would want to do. But if you don't, that's okay. Um, so if you don't want the sun there, that's fine too. So I'm going to make a little cloud, and what I'm going to do is get just a touch of white on my brush. I didn't even clean off my brush. I just put a little touch of white on the edge there. And this is where those C's come in. You want the white to be at the top, and you're going to do C, and then a C, and then a C, and I'll get a little bit more white on that same edge, and then do a C, and a C. Now, and then I'm going to go back over it a little bit, kind of smooth out those rough edges, but I'm not going to wash it, because it clouds, I sometimes are see-through, and sometimes they have like fluffiness that makes it look a little bulky like that. Okay, so we're going to leave that just like that. Got a little cloud there. And you can see by leaving a little white streak here and here, it makes it look like there's clouds within clouds. Okay, so we've got the cloud and the sky. So now we're going to do the tree and the bushes. We're going to let that sky dry a little bit before we attempt the, the uh, barn, before we do the barn. So I clean my brush off. I'm going to use the same brush. And I'm going to start with the trunk of the tree. And that means a little bit of brown. And I'm going to start from the bottom and just make my way up. And see how that white is showing through? It really does that with the brown. And this is thin paint. You can buy thicker paint in tubes, but it is more expensive. So when you're first starting out, it might be good to just start with the cheap stuff just till you get a feel for it. Or you can ask for the more expensive stuff for your birthday or Christmas. Now in this case, we have some blue on the edge there. I'm going to be really careful because I don't want that to run into the brown that would not look right so okay and then I'm just gonna make some stripes so that it kinda looks like bark okay that's all I'm gonna do with that brown okay wash the brush that means swish it around in the water but don't splash because if you get water on your painting it does ruin it well I shouldn't say ruin it it leaves a spot Okay, and then I'm going to dry off my brush. Try to make a sharp point like that. Okay, so now we've got the, the uh, bark done on the tree, the trunk of the tree. Then we're going to take green 
and white because the background of the tree is a paler green than the leaves. That's let's gives the appearance of light showing through on the leaves. So even though the, the leaves showing through are closer to the surface of the tree, we pa paint them in the background, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to take a little bit of white and just a touch of green. Now, if you're using the kit that they gave you and you haven't put your paint on a plate like this, do not dip into one color and then into the other color because then you'll ruin your, your paints. You want to put them somewhere else so that you can use them as you need and not worry about messing them up. Like, see how that green left a little spot? But that's okay, because I have plenty of white. But, okay. So now I've got my little pale green here. It's okay if there's some strips in there, that's fine. And then I'm going to just paint this whole background. And if you don't mix up enough, then you mix some more which I'm going to have to do because I didn't mix up enough. Okay, and then this is starting to dry in the background so it's not causing too much issue as far as painting over. But even if it spilled onto that, at this point it doesn't matter because we're still going to cover it up with a darker green. So just keep get your basic shape. See how that's going and just keep picking up paint and you're going to make like those little C's here at the edge so that you get a little bit of definition on the edge and a little bit more and we're going to go right over that brown and a little bit seep through but that's okay all right so that's just the background we're going to cover that up so I'm going to wash my brush and dry it Okay, clean brush. And then this is kind of fun. You're going to dip your brush into the paint. You don't want to scoop it at this point. You want to dip it like that. Okay. And then we're going to just start tapping. And you're going to tap and tap and tap. <coughs> And then pick up more green paint and tap and tap and tap. And just keep doing this and go over the edges a little bit. <coughs> Sorry, I got spring stuff going on. <coughs> okay, and then just keep tapping. Now, I think my brush is a little wet, so the paint is a little wet. So... And I'm using my left hand, which is a little awkward, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing here. Okay, and if you go over, see, it's fine. And this is where I said those mistakes will get covered up. And leave some of that paler color shining through. You want that to give the appearance of leaves poking through. Okay, <clears throat> I think my brush was a little wet. Yours will probably look a little bit different. Yours probably look more like this because you want to dry that brush off really good in between and I didn't do that. So, um, so there we go. And if you want to go up right to the edge, that's fine too. Just leave some poking out like that because trees are not perfectly round. Okay, and all right, now we're going to do, I'm going to dry off my brush a little bit because it's too wet. Okay, that's better. Now we're going to do the bushes. And the bushes, I did a little bit differently. I started out with this dark. Tap, tap, tap. canvas is moving. I'm trying to hold it and so you can see. Okay. 
Okay, and then do the edges too. Right where I said, remember the edge makes it just look a little nicer. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to pick up a little bit of that pale green that we used before just by tapping. I'm not going to clean out my brush. Actually, I don't think there's any more there, so I'm going to have to make some more. And I just picked up a little bit of white. There's an already enough green in there. So because I did that, um, I have to be a little more careful. And I'm just tapping here and there and there. You don't want like to go all in the same direction, so use your hand. Turn that brush. And just gives it a little definition, a little bit like the sun is touching the leaves. And try to cover up any white poking through. Okay, so now we've got the bush done. We need to let this dry till we can do the rest of it. So we're going to stop with that. Um, and I'm going to rinse, wash off my brush and squeeze it pretty good with the paper towel. So it's nice and dry. Okay. Now, I think at this point we better stop and do these lines. So what this is is a driveway and if you want to use your ruler to draw that, you're going to put it at an angle like this. I don't know if you can see that. Put your little ruler at an angle and draw a line. It doesn't have to be super accurate and then kind of check your distance make sure it's about equal and then draw another line okay and there's your driveway coming into the garage um, or the barn and then we have like a little patch of grass here so right at the edge of the barn I'm going to draw another line at an angle that's a not quite enough of an angle so there we go and these don't have to be perfect and then we've got rows of flowers you can make this all one flower patch if you want. It's your painting. You can do what you want. Um, I like three because I wanted different colors. So I'm just going to freehand this. One, two, and then I've got three. And these will be different little flower patches near the barn. Okay, so we've got those on there. We're waiting for our tree to dry. I'm going to try to keep my canvas so that the board is on the edge of this because if it goes into this it puts a little dent in there. This is very, uh, canvas is stretched tight but not so tight that you can't put dents in it. Okay, so now we're going to work on the barn. The sky is pretty much dry. It dries pretty fast. These are ac acrylic paints. They dry pretty fast. If you were doing oils they would not be dry. Um, but we're doing acrylics. Okay, so now we're going to work on the barn. And the first thing we're going to do is use the uh, red and paint the main part of the barn. And what I'm going to do is, if you can see, I'm going to start down here. I'm not going to start at the top because that part is brown. So we're going to go up and stop and then over and stop and then down and stop and try to keep that same distance and if you go over it, that's fine because it will cover up the brown will cover it up and then when you get to this edge you can go all the way to the edge with the red down at the bottom there okay and then just Go over it again, try to keep it a nice sharp line because you, that blue probably won't cover up that red if you make a mistake. Just keep it as close as you can. You can try to cover it up with the blue. You might take several coats. But So I'm going to use the edge of the brush to go straight down and try to keep a straight line there. And it does tend to bunch up the paint a little bit. So just do the best you can because you're going to have to wait for that to dry now. 
okay? And I'm going to go over a little bit there. Okay, oops, I went over, but that's okay. That brown will cover that up. And then I've got this sharp edge where the door is. I'm going to try my best to keep that a sharp edge. Now, I don't know if you can see it. You probably can't, but there's a little tiny thread right there um, that came off of my, that's can't come loose from the rest of the brush hairs, which I would cut that off if I had my scissors with me, but I don't. But if that happens, it's easier for you to just cut it off. It's less frustrating for sure because it will leave a little trail behind it when you're painting. Okay. Like right now, I'm going to turn my brush so I don't have that little thread. I don't want that to show up because this door is white. and I mean, uh, got white in it, and you don't want to go over if you can help it. The door is actually brown. So, Okay, and then I'm doing the edges. And like everything else, I'm going to keep it in tune with the painting so it's going to... I'm going to stop at the edge there. I don't know if you can see that. But. Okay, so now I've got that part done. That's um, the reddish area of the barn. Um, I'm going to give that just a second to dry a little bit before I continue on with the barn. So now we're going to do the sun that will be up here in the corner. And... What I did for that was I didn't even have to clean my brush. I just picked up a little bit of the yellow. And if you have it on your plate and you want to try to preserve the rest of that yellow, just use a corner. My sun is pretty orange, so um, if you want a yellow sun, then just don't. Make sure you clean up your brush first, that's all. Okay, so now I've got an orangey kind of a look, shade there. Um, and I'm just going to do like a half, whoops, turn it around to get rid of that little hair. A half circle there. And I'm just going to go right over the blue. Um, so there you go. I can brighten that up a little bit after it dries. So I will just let that dry, and I'm going to do the edges where I came with that. Um, so we'll let that dry. If you watch the video first and didn't paint that corner blue like I did, then you would be able to just paint it in there and not have to worry about brightening it up. But because I painted over the blue, it's a little dull, but that's okay. I will touch that up after it dries. Okay. Now, um, you can also use a hair dryer if you want to make sure that everything is dry before you start painting again. Um, I won't do that because I'm recording this, so let's hope for the best. But I think we're pretty good. That paint dries really fast, so. Okay, so I am going to use the small brush for this part. And I'm going to pick up the brown on my brush and very carefully go right to the edge and start painting that trim on that barn. And I'll do the sides too just to keep it uniform. And you'll see when you go over that red that brown covers up really well so any mistakes Now's your chance. Now, a little tip to help keep your hand straight is to hold it with your other hand. I don't know. Can you see I'm doing that? Kind of hold it with your other hand. And it helps to keep your hand straight so you can get to those little sharp corners and try to keep your brush as straight as possible, as, as non-shaky. Um, Okay, and if you go over a little bit, it's fine. 
Just be very careful. Okay, so now I'm going to do that on this whole section here. And if you want like a little window here, then you could do that after, if you did it before you painted. But I didn't want one there. It just didn't look right to me on this kind of barn. But Okay. I'm trying to be very careful. And load your brush often. My hand's in the way, I know. So I'll try to do it left-handed, but ha <laughs> ha Don't know. Doesn't work as well to do it left-handed. Okay, so there we go. Um, Got your little edge there. Not as sharp as I wanted it to be, but hey, it'll be fine. Okay, and then what I am going to do before I start on the door is take my pencil and I'm just going to freehand a V, like come over from this edge just a little bit, I don't know, come over from this edge a little bit and do the start of your V, and then come over from this edge a little bit and do another V, okay? And then we're gonna do the same thing, come down a little bit, go over, make your V, Okay, and then we're going to do these edges too and try to keep the distance the same. And if you want, you can make your own little paper template of a V to fit in there. I did not do that because I'm just freehanding it. So, oh, that one's off a little bit. Okay, it's off a little bit, but that's all right. Okay, so there's the V. And I'm going to take the brown paint and just be as careful as possible and paint inside that V. And if you go over, you can cover this up with a white, but it will take several coats to get it completely covered up, so just be as careful as you can. If you go over, you can fix it later. Okay, so then I paint inside the V, like that, and then do the same over here. And I hope my hand's not too much in the way. I know it is, but... Okay. And then the other side. Go over. And down. That's where these little brushes are really nice for a little detail like this. And, and there you go. Okay, now we're going to let that dry before we attempt the white, because brown's a lot harder to cover up. So we'll let that dry. We don't want any funny things. All right, I'm going back to my big brush. And what I'm gonna do is take, scoop up a little bit of white here, put it off to the side, if you can see that. And then I'm just going to dab into the brown, the edge of the brown a little bit Mix that with the white. This is going to be the driveway for the barn. And just mix them together until you have a cute kind of tannish color. I might want a little more brown. And just get it the way you like it. So it looks kind of like dirt, you know. Okay, and then just paint. Come right to the edge. Be very careful. You don't try to go over if you can help it and then go right into there. And if you go over on the actual driveway, that's okay. And if you need to mix up some more paint, go ahead. If the color is off a little bit, 
then just kind of blend it in so that it looks like you meant to do that. Okay. And then there we go with that. And then we're going to do the side again. Okay. Okay, there's our driveway. And then we're going to go to the green again. So wash out your brush. <coughs> and if you see that the water is starting to get too messy, uh, you can um, exchange it out for some clean water. Okay, and I'm going to have to have a little bit more green. Your kit should have plenty of each color to use. Okay, and then I'm just going to do like this side of the barn here. Just with the basic green. Go to the edge and we're going to do the sides. You can see that I'm doing the side there and then do the bottom. Okay, and then fill in that. All right, and your barn should, you should do like a little, on the pattern it had a little uh, off cut there, which I did not do when I painted so and if you didn't get it that that's fine too okay and then we're gonna do right beside the barn this is just grass that runs along the edge and if you go over a little bit that's all right and just try to keep your edges up try to keep your edges sharp but if you go over that's okay grass does not stay in one place it goes all over I'm doing the sides too. Okay, now we're going to um, do a little bit of grass. Don't even wash your brush or anything. We're going to do a little bit of grass coming up next to the tree here. So I'm going to take my brush and see how it's kind of kind of rough there at the edges. That's what you want. And I'm just barely going to touch, and I'm going to scooch up. And then lift. So go down, scooch up, and lift. Go down, scooch up, and lift. And you can even do brush in front, uh, in front of the tree, beside the tree, and turn your brush if you want to get, if you run out on the edges. And so you can make it long grass, short grass. So that's just something, a little bit of grass in the background, like that. Okay. And so we're going to do some flowers now. And we're still waiting for that barn to dry because we want to make sure to get good and dry before we attempt the white. So wash the brush, dry it, squeeze, get the color, the water out of there. Okay, so I you can decide what color flowers you want here. Um, what I did was I think I did like a peachy, peachy pink, a red, kind of a reddish, and then a pale blue, and then a yellow. Um, but you can do whatever you want. So I'm going to mix up some red and some white. And kind of get like a pinky color there. So I love pink flowers, and I'm just going to brush that on there. And if you need to make more, go ahead and make more. It's hard to judge how much made paint you're going to need. And just kind of play it by ear. Try to get into that corner. If you spill over, that's fine too. Flowers don't stay in one spot. 
unless you're in a pot. And then um, make sure you do your edges too. Okay. And there I have my pink row. Now I'm going to go more red. So I'm just going to add, I'm going to add some red, more red to my pink and get a darker, I don't want this red barn red. I want a little bit sh shade different. I'm going to add just a touch of water to thin that out just a little bit. Okay. And this, um, I think I'll do this red one over here. So it's kind of, I don't want it too close to the, the, the already pinky one. Okay. Oh, I didn't draw enough lines, but that's okay. Um, okay. Get that on there on the edges like that. Okay. And then I'm going to do a patch of yellow, I think. And you can do whatever you want, but wash out your brush, clean it out, pick up the yellow and just go and fill in that spot. The yellow is much thinner. I don't know if it's thinner, but the, because it's a paler color, it wants to not cover up too well. So um, I had to get some more yellow there. So you want to put that on pretty thick, but you do have to let it dry a little bit before you work with it. And I'm going to go over the edges a little bit here. Okay, and then do the bottom too. Try to keep it from smearing too much, but you see that's still wet, so it's smearing a little bit. But that's all right. Okay, so there we go. Before we do anything more with those flowers, we are going to go back to our white. The brown is almost dry. I'm going to clean out this brush because I will go back to it here in a minute. And my water's getting pretty messy, but I'm going to let it go. Okay, go back to the small brush because this is the white and you want to be as careful as possible on that. So I'm going to pick up white paint with my brush, load it up like that, and then very carefully try to fill that in. And you'll see that the white will cover up a little bit of a mistake, but you don't want too much. You don't want to have to cover up too much if you can help it. Okay. And then just keep working it. If your brown, if you put it on thicker than I did and it's not dry, blast it with a hair dryer and it will dry up pretty fast. Just takes a couple minutes with a hair dryer. Okay, and then you're going to keep working that little door boards there and be as careful as possible. And you can also, if you feel like you're not gonna be able to be as careful to get that line straight, you can put a piece of paper right on top of it like that. Make sure your paint's dry and then paint right up to that edge. It gives you a little bit more freedom. Um, just be careful because that paint can seep underneath there. And then you'll end up with another mess. But easily covered up with the brown if that happens. Okay, so there I go. Got my door on there. I'm seeing some uh, white poking through on that brown, so I'm going to take my little brush and kind of go over it, fill in that white so it's not poking through. I can also, like, f if the edges are a little rough, I can fix those. Um, yeah, just be careful you don't touch into the white. Okay. So there we have our little door. Now we're going to wait for that to dry to, f to finish the last step on that. So now we're going back to the flowers. And you see how we wait for things to dry a little bit and then go back to them. Actually, uh, it's still 
pretty wet. So we're going to go back to the sun. And I'm going to just dip into some yellow with my big brush and just go over that again and perk it up a little bit. There we go. That looks a little better. A little more sunny. Okay. And I can even do that several times if I want it really yellow. Just have to wait for it to dry in between coats. Okay. I'm going to clean up my brush. And you will see that behind these flowers it looks a little greenish. That's the representing the leaves. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of the green and I'm going to dab into the plate until it's almost all gone. See how it's getting lighter and lighter and lighter as the more I dab? Because I don't want a lot of green in here. It's still a little wet, so we're going to be really careful. And we're just going to dab, 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 or tap, tap. Okay, and that's the leaves of your flowers just poking through. And go back to the green. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. With a light touch. And then go back over here. Tap, tap, tap. And then back over here. Tap, tap, tap some more. Pick up a little more green. Tap, tap, tap. You don't want big globs. You want little tiny dots. And then touch very lightly. And you can practice this on a piece of paper first if you think you might have a heavy touch. Because if you have, if you watch and you have a heavy touch, you're going to end up with a blob. So you need a light touch. Light touch. Like that. Okay. We're going to let that dry a little bit. And we're going to do the um, flowers on the trees next. So we don't need our big brush for this, so we're going to clean that out and lay that off to the side. And we are going to use the, t the end of our small brush. Believe it or not, you can use both ends of the brush to paint with. Um, we're going to use this end, and all I'm going to do is, if you wanted to make this an apple tree, you could do the same thing with red, the bigger, <coughs> the bigger tip of the brush, and use red and make dots in there to represent apple tree. But we're not going to do that today. But you can do that, sure. We're going to make this a little red flowering bush and this a little yellow flowering bush, and it's dry. So that's good. And I'm just going to tap, tap into my red, and tap onto my flowering bush. And the more you tap, the more flowers you will have on your bush there. And you can you can rub it around a little bit if you want a bigger flower and just tap it quickly if you want a short or a small one. You know, flowers come in all sizes. Okay, so there we got that. Um, and you could also use the same technique to do this part if you didn't, you could start with green and then add the colors which I probably should have done, but this looks cute too. Um, but we're not finished with that yet. So this one's going to be yellow. So I'm doing the same thing. Tapping. And I went into the red by mistake. Ugh. And you can tap more than once, and it just gets smaller each time. Okay, so now we have our little flowering bushes. 
A um, couple last things we're going to do here. Um, with these flowers here, I'm kind of looking at them and thinking, oh, they don't look as good as I want them to. So what I'm going to do is tap into the red and do the same technique. Tap, 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 tap until... I'm getting just a little bit of color on there and I'm going to add a little bit of red in here. So it looks like red, more reddish flowers. And I'll do the same thing over here, kind of add a little more red. Softens up that green a little bit too. And I'm going to spill them over a little bit under the edges here. So it's poking up. Okay, that looks a little better, I think. And soften up that green some. And then I'm going to go into the yellow, clean my brush off, go into the yellow, tap, 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 same thing. I don't want big clumps and then go into soften up the green a little bit. And with the yellow it's kind of blending more than it is doing anything but it's softening up the green. So, <clears throat> Okay, and then I'm going to get a little bit of the red on my tip of my brush like this and I'm going to touch a little bit of the red on the other end and a little bit of blue on the other end. So now I have three colors. Red blue, and then the yellow. Three colors on one brush. Let's see how that works. <laughs> and then I'm going to line this driveway with flowers. Yeah, that looks okay. Okay. And if you want, you can even line this tree line with flowers. And just kind of go up there. All right. Last thing we're going to do. is, well, next to the last thing, we're going to get our small brush. We're almost done. And I'm going to get it wet, and I'm going to tip into the brown and get it really thin. And load this brush, kind of roll it in the paint, so that you've got this wet brown paint on here. And then you're gonna do the lines on your barn. So just start over here, do a line, line, line. And just keep working that, try to keep the distance about the same. And because the paint is thin, you can do a thinner line. Okay, so we got the lines on the barn. The last thing, and I don't know if my white is quite dry enough, but we'll try it, um, is I'm gonna just take my pencil and I'm going to draw connecting these lines and connecting this. And it just looks like the barn door. The paint wasn't quite dry, but it looks like the barn the boards are going across. Okay, so there we have the painting. And like I said, you can do all one color here. You can do four sections, three sections, two sections, whatever. It's your painting. Do what you want. Um, if you want, if you think the tree isn't as green as you want it to be, go back over it. Put some more green in there. This time my green is not watered down like it was, but and just tap, 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 and go in different directions. Don't go in the same direction. And then you've got more definition there. And you've still got the light showing through, the light colored leaves. Okay? And if you can also go back, if you see um, areas where the white is showing through, like right here, just touch it up. Touch it up. And 
if you see something like I don't really like how thick that line is, I had a heavy hand, I guess, then I'm going to thin it out a little bit, make it a little, a little slimmer there. And I'm going to touch up a little bit here. So you get the idea. But there's different techniques. We've got tapping, brushing, the C's for the cloud. Um, we've got the uh, yellow sun in the corner, which I'm going to put more yellow on just to brighten it up some. See how that brightens it up even more. Okay, so there we go. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope your picture turns out fine and you can share it with someone you love. And um, I'm glad I was able to do this for you. So have a good day, everybody, and maybe I'll see you again sometime. Bye.